With King Bohemian Cacteria out, I'm sure newer players are wondering where they even came from. You see, back in 2019, the developers held an art contest for several different rows. The top picks would then become units. Two years later. As you might imagine, I have a feeling some of the creators have already stopped playing. Regardless, big shout out to them. Say hi if you're watching this. Now, there are several different categories. Physical attackers, magical attackers, healers, buffers, debuffers, and tanks. There are also boss monsters, but I don't think we'll ever be able to play as them. As of this video's release, we've seen a third of the units. King Behemi became the representative for tanks, while Cacteria was recently released as the debuffer. So that leaves four more rows. Physical attackers, magical attackers, healers, and buffers. Other rows you might imagine, like hybrid damage dealers or evoke damage dealers, weren't really a category, so those didn't appear. First up, the magical attacker. Yigni, the banished Mugo. Ah, terrifying. And not in the silly way like a cactar. So what's his story? Yigni worked for King Mog, and he was a very smart Mugo. But he wanted power, which he relished on the battlefield. So, obviously, he did the only rational thing and turned to forbidden rituals and incantations that usually involved death. As you might expect, King Mog didn't think this was very cool and eventually fired him. Yigni, appalled by this horrendous betrayal, swore vengeance on his former employer. His mind, filled with rage and unbridled fury, looked rather unstable, and without access to any other calming hobby, he eventually turned to killing as a pastime. And so he reaped everyone's souls, which gathered under his vest and turned into a being known as the Krojja. What the duck, what is this, E for blood-curdling murder and gore? Even to this day, Yigni is still studying dark magic, because... Because King Mog is just too powerful. Is he really? <laughs> if you didn't think this got dark enough, let's move on to game mechanics. Yigni might be a fearsome Mugo, but his true power lies in the Krojja. The Krojja is powered by the blood of his teammates. But, um, don't worry, apparently there are rituals that let your team survive. So the Krojja can keep taking their blood! I'm actually not sure how this would be implemented in game, or even if the developers would take the time to do so. But I think they'll just resort to gravity mechanics if they do. If we move up here, we can see that his proposed limit burst used dark magic damage, while lowering the enemy's fire and dark resistance. His abilities are intriguing, though I highly doubt that the developers will copy the submission to the letter. We've got some abilities that can project any status effects on Yigni onto his allies. A cleanse, a fire attack, a attack and magic break, some kind of ability that involves healing, a buff copy, though this one seems to only take the enemy's buffs into account, and finally a dark magic attack. As a Neo Vision, I doubt the developers would split Yigni's elements, unless they plan to make him into something like a fire finisher in one form and a dark finisher in the other. Or they can make a brave shift that focuses purely on the Kraja's damage output, and their first form instead revolves around significant debuffs and imperils. Whatever it is, I do hope they keep it viewer friendly. Second on the list, the healer. This is Kresnik, the arcane healer. Designed after a medieval plague doctor, he carries an arcane siphon filled with curses and other evil energy. As you can see, while Neostock submitted him as a healer, Kresnik can serve as a supporter and a debuffer as well. Now, keep in mind that this doesn't necessarily reflect the final product. For the record, King Behemi was proposed as a physical tank, a magical tank, a physical attacker, and a supporter. Of the four, he became a physical tank, a physical attacker, a supporter, and a debuffer. Which isn't a major deviation, but it can throw you for a loop if you were expecting a magical tank. By the way, if anyone was wondering, Cacteria was just listed as a debuffer, but she also became a supporter and a magic damage dealer. Regardless, as a Plague Doctor, it appears that he utilizes the curses he carries around with him, which will most likely materialize as either status ailments or general debuffs. The design doesn't mention anything about elements, so I assume the creator didn't think about including elemental imperos. It makes sense, given that few healers had that ability anyways. The buffs are another interesting aspect. Given that he can manipulate the curses to his allies' benefit, I assume that his buffs will be the polar opposite of his debuffs. Meaning if he can lower the enemy's stats, he'll be able to raise your ally stats. If he inflicts status ailments, he'll grant your team resistance to said status ailments. If there are elemental imperos, he'll raise your team's elemental resistance. Well, the previous examples are just speculations on my part, so just take it with a grain of salt. Although buffs and debuffs are interesting, we can't forget that Kresnik is primarily a healer. I expect some of the conventional abilities. Raise, re-raise, cure, MP management, resistance buffs, all the things that you generally think about. 
Maybe he'll have something rare, like the ability to cure zombie like Kamiya. To be honest, as he is primarily a healer, it should be the main focal point of his kit. But healers are such a dependable row that there are 7 star units who still see constant use today. As a Neo Vision healer, there is a part of me that expects something astonishing. A healing ability so staggering that it creates an insurmountable gulf between Neo Vision units and 7 star units. Of course, such an idea is admittedly rather bewildering, and his healing may ultimately share the spotlight with his other rows. Third, the buffer. Bulwark and the melodic mascots. We've got Oro Blanco the Cactar. We've got Bergamot the Tonberry. We've got Pomelo the Chocobo. And we got our boy Moop. I assume Bulwark is the name of the band. We can see that Bulwark is not only a supporter, but also proposed as a magical tank. I'm not 100% sure what this middle one represents. I'm pretty sure it's a physical tank, but the fact that it looks slightly off can throw people for a loop. One thing to note is that Pomelo isn't as musically inclined, but he does try his best. His music apparently damages the enemy. Whether this takes the form of buff dispel or simple chaining, who knows. As a hoe, I think it would be cool if the developers incorporated some powerful singing effects into this unit. I also feel like this unit should be more of an offensive supporter, rather than defensive. Killer buffs, elemental damage buffs, stat buffs, and limit burst damage buffs. But ultimately, it's just my opinion. Honestly, I just really want to see this sprite work once it's released. I have high hopes it'll be a mix of goofy and fun. Finally, the physical damage dealer. Nappy, the hero of legend. Right off the bat, it's a bit glaring that her rarity lists 5 to 7 star, but I'm sure she'll become a Neo Vision. Her suggested rows are physical damage dealer and supporter, and we get a glimpse of the creator's ideas over here. There's a cooldown ability that copies a chaining family, steel, and triple cast steel. Now, obviously this is a bit overpowered, and might even give Sephiroth a run for his money. Imagine the Mugo challenging Sephiroth! The support aspects might just extend to that chaining idea, but you could also buff your team's offensive power just by being a bundle of positive energy. As for elements, I imagine light, given legendary hero. But it could be anything else. The creator didn't really give any kind of direction with this aspect here, so it's really up to the developers to decide. I really like the little deviations in her design. You can see that part of this here is broken. She's got a bump with a bandage, and she has this large scar across her face. But even so, she's got blush stickers, she's got a great sword the size of her body, and look at that stance, overflowing with gusto and confidence! She's also kind of delusional, but in a way that makes it more appealing. And those are the 4 fan design units we should expect to get. Thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, leave a like and subscribe. Comment below which ones you like, and feel free to be generous with the compliments. I'm sure the creators would appreciate their thoughts and support. I'm really looking forward to their release. Final Fantasy Brave Exvius generally does an excellent job with unit sprites, and the last two sprite work for the fan design units were fantastic. I'm hoping they add a bit more character to their idle animations, but recently, the one thing global original units aren't known for are... character.